This is the Aftermarket Radio Network. Hey, what's up? Carm Capriato. Remarkable Results Radio, the premier podcast of personal and professional development. You know that. Designed primarily for those serving the automotive aftermarket service industry. And I'm in Cancun. Yeah, I'm sorry. And I'm working, so don't tell me I'm having too much fun. I'm at the Transformers 2022 Summit. By the way, just to break the code, we're in our second day. The speakers have been phenomenal. Wait till you hear all the podcasts we're going to leave with. And with us is Nicole Benikoff. Hi, Nicole. Hello. You got my name right. I did, yeah. <laughs> and I didn't think I would goof that up, but it, yeah. it's actually, it actually sounds like it's spelled. Her shop is Subi Guys. Mm-hmm. I've never interviewed someone that has a specialty in Subaru. Yeah, we've. Uh, I've seen or heard of a few different shops around the country that specialize in just Subaru, but you know where we're located and I've never personally met anybody. So it's unique. Okay. Traverse City, Michigan in Northern Michigan. There's obviously a lot of Subarus in Michigan. <laughs> you got it. it just, especially where we live. Hey, just about any town has really, I mean, maybe the, I don't want to pass judgment on, <laughs> on who owns Subarus, but wherever I go, I see, I live in the South of Buffalo uh-huh. where it snows a lot. We're five miles from one of the ski resorts West. And we see Subarus everywhere because they never get you stuck anywhere, right? That's why I have one and put snow tires on and you're feeling pretty confident in the winter. Hey, thanks to our sponsor, Napa, for providing you this episode. How does Napa support your auto care center through national marketing? Well, Napa will build upon the already successful Know How for All campaign and promote auto care offering and services to the Do It For Me customer with support through sales driver promotions, optimized targeted media that give your repair facility an online presence on Napa Online. Now, if you're interested in partnering with Napa Auto Care and capitalizing on the Napa Know How For All national marketing campaign, contact your servicing Napa Auto Parts store. Enjoy. So I met Nicole here and basically said, hey, what's going on? She's here to learn a whole bunch of things. And I believe you've been motivated by all the stuff you've heard. But you were telling me, which is why I invited Nicole to come on the show, is there, you were going through a moment of being in staleness, like old 10 day old bread. You, <laughs> you just say, you know, uh, maybe if I toast it, it'll be okay. How do I toast myself? Right? Right. Yeah. I've only owned this business myself for about four years, but I've been, you know, searching and searching and, you know, learning and learning. And, and I'm just the type that likes to learn and grow. And so I was feeling that way a little bit. I was feeling, you know, I've made a lot of changes. We've grown our business. But I was starting to feel a little stale, like you said, just kind of thinking, you know, am I just going to keep doing this year after year, the same thing? Or is there more out there for me? Or is there something I might, you know, feel a little more in tune with as far as even in the industry? And so it really had me thinking. But you own the business for, you said four, right? Yes, four years. But you've been involved in the business for how many? It's been about 15 years, um, you know, that I've been partially involved. So I can almost see how you could have gotten stale Mm -hmm. (laughs) because wait a minute, she's only owned the business for four years and she's stale. (laughs) No, she's been around forever. And of course we do want to talk about the buyout and issues that happen with the family. And I think it's important to share a lot of family stuff, but you were telling me uh, that Troy Kaplan really motivated you to get to the next level. Tell us that story. Sure. So, you know, we've been growing the business. I joined Transformers about a year ago and then had the opportunity to meet Troy at one of our meet, our group meetings. And something that he said, a few things he said actually really clicked with me. And so Troy's business model, for those that don't know, is that he started his own shops, but then as he grew, he had owner operators in his shops. So they would be part owner, but they would be the ones, these individuals would be the ones operating that specific store. And it just clicked with me because as I'm growing, as our business is growing, I see other people like myself who love to learn and grow and haven't met their, you know, they're not done. Mm -hmm. And so I just thought that is such a cool way to be able to share and give help give opportunity to people that maybe otherwise would not be able to start their own shop, but they do have the desire to grow and they have a lot of the things that, that are needed. When I learned that that's how he operated his business, it really reignited my desire 
to grow my business so that I could help others. But do you want to do that same model or you just, you were inspired to grow? No, I want to do that. You You want to bring owner operators in. Exactly. And you know, there's a lot of ways we've discussed it here. There's a lot of different ways you can grow and you know, ways you can model your business. Right. But that just, I love being around people that like to grow (laughs) themselves. And so that really um, attracted me to that idea. I'm trying to nail down. Does sure. everybody who comes to Transformers want more stores? Because I know people that are in Transformers, they're just truly happy with their one store. They are. Mm-hmm. You've come here, you're hanging with multi-shop operators, and that has taught you or shown you that being a multi-shop operator is possible. And you've, you've got a brain trust of people to help show you, guide you. Exactly. Yeah. So I came, you know, I came into Transformers just because I, I wanted to keep growing. I was in another coaching group, repair shop coach I was part of for three years and they really helped me get my business to where it was. But I just felt that I wanted to keep growing. And so I joined Transformers and I felt like when I joined Transformers, I was back in the baby seat. (laughs) You know, Uh. I was, uh, I was at the low, you know, I had so much to learn and that really that's what I want. You know, that's not a bad realization when you when you join a new organization to stop and say, uh, let me take some baby steps. I'm a new kid on the block here. And mm-hmm. But even if you meet these big operators that run successful, even if it's a large or multi-shop, haven't you found the givingness that they have mm-hmm. willing to teach you, guide you, oh, share, sure. share information? I love it. It's amazing <laughs> how much people in our industry give. You know, and my um, other people that I've been blessed to call my mentors, you know, there's some in in the industry and they really helped me see that because when you're first, when I first was learning how to run this business, which is just a few years ago, really, I was just trying to get all of the knowledge that I could. Like I was trying to, you know, assimilate knowledge from anybody that would give me knowledge. But then they also helped me see through coaching that then it's your responsibility uh, to help other people. You know, so there's a twofold um, purpose when you are in a group. You know, it's you're getting the knowledge, but you also have something to share. And that's been a hard one for me to learn. When you are challenged to, okay, uh, you're on the, the Zoom call or, or, or whatever that mastermind time would be, you are uh, finding it difficult to come up with something to share? Well, it's not that I don't have something to share. I just, you know, that is my natural personality to think that somebody else, what they have to share would be more helpful. And so, you know, I will often keep quiet. Because you're an introvert. Yes. You told me that. And so I broke the code. She's an introvert. (laughs) I don't believe so. But let's take a little dive into the family dynamic. 15 years ago, I think you said you've been in the business. Were you in the office, on the counter? What was your first job? So when I first came into the business, I came in in just the office capacity. Okay. And I, because there was a, there was a divorce in the family. So it was kind of upended. The business was when I came in, I remember my mom had always done the best she could, but she had another full-time job. So she did all of the books. And I remember going upstairs to the, like the upper attic and it was completely full of stacks of paper. Yes. In boxes. These are the receipts for the last 10 years. (laughs) Yes. And so that's when I came in and that was what I understood my role to be in the business at first. But then as I started, you know, spending more time in the business, I was really attracted to the clients and their stories and relationships. And that's kind of what steered me into the next direction. Did you uh, realize way back then that you could potentially be the single owner of the place? Not at all. Not at all. I think that's a good part of the story. Mom, dad, brother, and you, this is probably typical small America business families. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to go into it too deep, but the evolution of you becoming the owner just four years ago, how did that happen? It's hard to even realize how that happened, but I've always been the person who wants to learn more and I'm always curious. And so from all of those different roles, you know, starting out just doing the books in the office, I was never satisfied and I've never, it's one of my core values that you don't know everything. And so I think when you realize you don't know everything, you're humble about it. And then you find the people that do know more than you and they can help you. That's been completely life-changing to me. I find 
your loving to learn, being curious. I call it, I coined a phrase many years ago, being a perpetual student, never stopping to learn. And when you're humbled, I believe like you are, because you know you don't know everything, but you probably know more than you're willing to confess that you do. Does that make for less rash decisions? Because before you make a decision, you're probably assessing three or four different ways to do something because you want to learn every option. Yeah. I think I used to do that more now because I've found other people who have tried the different options. You're still inspecting and, and looking at the different options, but now you see them and how, if they were successful and what their numbers yeah, are. Yeah. And so now it's like, I don't need to learn this myself. I can look at these case studies and follow this path. Um, so it makes decisions easier. And my kids even, they say, mom, you always say the studies show blah, blah, blah. Uh -huh. and, and that is true. I mean, I think now every time I say it multiple times a day, I think about that. And it's just, no, this has been done before. This has been done before. Why do we need to? It takes a lot of the experimenting out of it. You just have to be gutsy enough to pick the option yeah. and make it happen. Talk about gutsy, buying out mom and your brother. <laughs> Scared. Yeah, I was very, very scared, but I just knew that, you know, if I didn't do something different, I... Was leaving the business an option? It was an option, but not one that I could ever live with for me. I got it. Did you do mom first, then your brother? Brother first. And my mom was never, in the last recent years, never been like, she never had a... Involved involved. In she was not yeah. involved. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, she knew, and I just... We presented it together like, mom, you know, I'm going to take this business. I'm going to keep going with this business for tax reasons. I think you should let me buy you out <laughs> right now. And um, so we made that agreement and I, I felt it was the best decision. And so did she. And you and your brother agreed that you couldn't work together type of thing. Yeah. yeah. We were just at that point, you know, we'd had some things happen. And I, mean, I, I do think, you know, that we could have me personally, I think we could have, but he didn't feel that way. So um, we decided, you know, somebody had to step out. It's Carm here, talking to you about what the Napa Auto Care Center program can do for your business. You probably already know the Napa brand is the most recognized and trusted name in the automotive aftermarket industry. In fact, studies show that nearly 95% of consumers recognize Napa and associate it with quality parts, service, and technical expertise. So why not complete a pro image upgrade and take advantage of that? ProImage is a co-branding program for the exterior and interior of your shop. On the outside, it includes the Napa colors and distinctive Napa signage. While the public may know you as a reliable locally owned business, a ProImage upgrade helps set your shop apart from the competition even further. It's also a visual signal to customers and potential customers that you and Napa are partners. Most importantly, Pro Image really works. This co-branding opportunity has helped Napa Auto Care Centers across the country increase their car counts and sales. In fact, those that have completed a Pro Image project enjoy an average 23% sales increase during the first year. Pro Image upgrades are also available for the interior of your shop. A Pro Image interior upgrade transforms your customer waiting area from merely utilitarian to warm and welcoming. The goal is to maintain your shop's independent identity while enhancing the customer's experience. You can get a free look at what a pro image exterior or interior upgrade could look like by visiting the Napa Auto Care members site and clicking on the pro image link under the Napa Pro Image tab. Or contact your local Napa Auto Parts store. Your servicing Napa store can tell you more about pro image, plus the hundreds of other reasons to become part of the Napa Auto Care family, the largest network of independent automotive repair shops in the country. So you do the deal, papers are signed, it's two weeks later, what's the first thing you did? I guess there was a first thing, but I don't know what it was because there's always a million things to do. A million right? things that I'm doing. But obviously I had a team of coaches that I was working with yep. and I've always relied on them, you know, in the past four years and to help me organize all of the tasks and all of the things I have going on in my head so that we can determine what is the biggest needle mover, what is the most urgent. I like that needle mover. Are there any problems you're fixing right now? I don't think it's a problem, but it, okay. it is something we're really working on is we're trying to grow. I mean, we're pushing to grow. And when I say we, I mean me and my team, but specifically I have two managers that I work with. 
in my shop. And um, so we have eight technicians. Okay. And we've just, we've grown three technicians in the last few months. So this now is, we're- This is explosive growth. I mean, I feel that it is. How many is. bays you have? We have eight bays. We've been growing 20% every year, but this year now we're staffed to grow. We are really staffed to grow. We've never been in this situation before. Now, so you're going to be rocking a lot. And part of that is to generate some cash that you can grow, right? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. We have the cash. I mean, we've, because I've come from a point in the business where I think a lot of people have that, you know, you're paying bills that you might not be able to cover. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, from those days, you know, past that, you know, your bills are more than what you're bringing in. And so um, I've been cautious with that. Um, as we grow, but now we're there. You're cautious. Can I change the word to conservative? Conservative, yeah. Okay. Because I'm not cautious. You're right. Okay. So you're conservative. Will that guide an acquisition by trying not to overpay? I don't think so. Not okay. anymore. I've you, changed. You'll be willing to pay for the right location, the right team. Yes. You don't necessarily <laughs> care about the brand of the business because you're going to rebrand it. Mm hmm. I've changed that way. So now we have, I felt I needed to be conservative so that I had a stable business. And that's always been important to me for my team to make sure that we're stable and that, that I'm, you know, I feel that we're stable, but now I feel like we have that and now it's time to go. Is Traverse City big enough to put another location in, or are you going to go to another city? Our next step is uh, general repair. So we have the Subi guys to me, the next logical step would be to buy another business in our same city. Same city doing general. Yep. Yeah. General and then more and more. But I would say we would probably start branching out after that. So there are several cities that we are scoping to put more Subaru mm -hmm. specialty shops, but then also just keep growing the general repair. Does your coach and you have timelines on this? I mean, are there goals set? I mean, you don't want to grow super fast, but you want to grow. Yeah, we do have timelines. We don't have timelines past the next shop because it's happened so fast. And honestly, I've been getting new coaches because I've been not outgrowing my coach, but I said to one of my coaches at Transformers, I said, hey, I need somebody who's been where I want to go because right. that's important, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. so I can follow them. Makes all kind of sense. Been there, done that. So give me your best advice. To me, that's one of the reasons you get a coach because you want help in certain areas and you've got the financial stuff down, margins down, all that stuff down, right? Yes. You're, you have any problem finding techs? I mean, it's always, I guess, a problem. It's not right now. For got me. it. And paying them. No. Got it. So now it's because you have the commitment and the vision to grow. This is the next big mountain to climb the frontier, right? Sure. And, you know, I feel like. I never knew that I could help be a person that can display a vision or, you know, promote, I don't know, I'm not saying it right, but um, cast a vision and have other people follow. But we've had this team and I just feel like now people are attracting to us, people like we are, you know, and it feels really good. Oh, I bet you. Does your team have your vision and do they realize where you're going? That's something we've, I've recently shared with them over the past few months. I mean, this is a new vision for me, you know, this is in the last within the last year that I felt that I was ready to really grow and we were ready. So I have shared that they all know that now. And I just can't believe I have a team who's really behind me and that's what they want for themselves and for the business. So the day that you opened up to your team to set your, you know, talk about your passion, set your vision, was it just your key leadership or was it the entire company? It was just key leadership. Key leadership. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Would the rest of the company uh, have value in knowing where you want to go? They know now. Oh, they do yeah. know now. Because I, I think... It got out. It got out. And then I was like, you know, I want everybody to know for a couple of reasons. I want them to know that, hey, if you're in this and you're willing to learn and grow, you know, come yeah. along. Did you have fear along the way? Did you have to overcome that? All the time. Yeah, really? <laughs> fear. You know, I, I always... I give that advice to even my employees or any friends, even, you know, I, in my kids, you know, I'm like, I sit or I used to sit in my car before I walked into work and psych myself up, you know, like you're the leader, you can do this. Don't be afraid. You've got it. It's like that self-talk every day. Cool. I have to do it less now in less situations, but it's still there. A time waster that you're trying to fix. I'm trying to be more efficient with my time. I know I get easily distracted. So, okay.
Because you constantly want to learn things. Oh, what's that? What's that? I mean, I, do you chase uh, silver baubles? Oh, yes. Uh -huh. You know, that's who I am. But I realized that that is where, what got me here to a certain extent. But at this point now, I'm having, being surrounded with people who can temper that, Yeah. you know, an integrator, my manager is like, we uh -huh. don't need to do that right now. That's a great idea, but let's focus. Are you implementing EOS? I just heard the word integrator. Yeah. So we're just starting with okay. that. We cool. both read the book. We're both buy into, you know, we love it, but, um, so we're trying to work along with each other on that. Really neat. Okay. Was the business profitable when you bought it out? I would say no. Okay. <laughs> there was two partners or three partners in it and it was a loss sure. after the year. So um, it was not profitable. How long did it take to turn that to positive? A year. That's I mean, it. you know, within I mean, the that's, year. That's a huge overcome. It really is. Yeah. You credit it to your coaches. I do. And, you know, we were doing a lot of things right. I always say this in the business. My dad and my, they did a lot of things right. My dad and brother. But they did it on accident, I would say. I mean, that's just who uh, they were, but not with, and even me, like, we didn't know what to do to make those numbers turn. Got it. Did your dad help you a lot, teach you stuff? You know, I think from a really young age, I feel like, and everybody who knows my dad, they would say he's an eccentric person, you know. He was always an inventor. We grew up with inventions that he was creating, like, in our garage. The whole garage would be full of, you know, I can think of, a few different things like a chimney. He had a chimney invention. He had one for, he had a couple of inventions for cars. Like if your belt broke, he was gutsy too. And I gutsy, that, gutsy. It you, taught me that you're gutsy. I am like when it clicks and I decide that this is what needs to happen. I do have the guts to just jump off. So tell me about gut. I talk about gut a lot. I call it intuition. Mm -hmm. Intuition is what's your gut telling you? Do you have a very strong intuition? I feel like I do yeah. when I listen to it. I'm learning to listen when to it more. You, oh my God, that is so perfect. Mm -hmm. When you listen to it, do you talk to your intuition a lot? Oh yeah. <laughs> just, I'm sorry, that's a cool <laughs> question. <laughs> you know, it is a cool, I don't know about that. But a lot of times, right, you think about it after the fact, like, oh, that was my gut. That was my instinct. Yeah. And I either ignored it or um, pushed it aside, or you listen to it. Do you have anybody to run your gut by? Um, I mean, my husband, yeah. he's the, I don't, whether he likes the extent of that, <laughs> um, you know, he's the person that I talk to, then I feel like I can connect with. And then, of course, having my group of my specific group, coaching group. Is it all, is it all females or is it a combination? It's a combination. There's one other female shop owner in my group. Cool. What is your position on consolidation in our industry? Because we heard this incredible panel discussion on consolidation. I mean, it seems like you want to be a player in that. It is. And, you know, from the research I've done and just, you know, what others have shared with me, that that does look like it, you know, will be the future of things. At least, you know, that, that, that looks like a pretty good possibility that that's going to happen yeah. a lot more. We see it happening that's, more. That's what Troy did. That's what Troy did. I feel like this is the time to really take advantage on the lower level of that. And so, although, you know, I, in my gut too, or I think, you know, this is what allows people, this is America, this is what allows people to have their business and, you know, work hard and see results. But, you know, I feel like some things you can't fight and um, I'd like to be ahead of the game on that. Cool. Are you doing enough marketing? Keep growing the business? You know, before, I hate to say this, but we really never had to do any marketing you Whoa. Know, in the early parts of the business. But was it because you were the Subaru go-to person? Yeah, I yeah. mean, everybody told the rest of the people, right? Yeah, it was a word of mouth. And, and still, our biggest marketing is referrals. That's the number one way that we grow our business is mm -hmm, referrals. Mm -hmm. This is a funny story. My dad, when we were first starting the business, I remember we would print out these little flyers in our home computer. And then we would put them in baggies, like little Ziploc baggies. Sure. And he would go and put them on cars. So yep. it, it was when he started the business in his garage. Guerrilla marketing. Yeah. Mm. And, and, you know, then we we continued that with Subarus and we would only on Subarus because, you know, we're, we're so specific. Yeah. So um, that's really what was the biggest grower of our business in the early times. But now I'm learning a lot more about marketing and how to use it and be more specific to pinpoint and target, you know, who you want. Do you have a superpower? 
I think it's my ideas. You know, I, I feel like my superpower is have an idea and look for solutions. You and I are extremely similar when it comes to that, because uh, as my daughter Tracy will tell you, um, I come up with more ideas and then my intuition says we should do this. And then, of course, I run it by Tracy Mm -hmm. and I find out that it's either bad, stale, wrong, (laughs) you know, and then and then if I think it's still so good, then I remind her. Remember, we talked about that the other day. Yes. (laughs) Yes, Dad, I remember that. Okay, (laughs) you seem to be very much like me with your ideas how do you control what you actually believe is the right and proper thing to do and then actually put glue on it? That is a hard one because it's, you know, sometimes I feel like the mad scientist. Oh, oh that is such a great <laughs> you, analogy. You know, and I try to hide it from the world. You know, I try to hide it, but, you know, the people that really know me, they get it, you know. You've got all these ideas. Oh, I can see you at, in the lab with all the beakers yeah. and, and, and all the <laughs> bubbles coming out and all the tubes laying around. And you look and says, these are all my ideas. ideas you know, <laughs> and, and, you know, some of them will explode if I followed every idea. Oh, my God. Um, but I think just putting them on paper or, you know, a different system. But then I feel like I've had a lot of good advice, too, about ideas. Because in this industry or in our, my coaching group, there's other people like me. Oh, uh, good, <laughs> you know? cool. Well, you can relate you to know? that person. I know exactly what they're thinking. Yeah, and so, like, they, they'll say, you know, okay, like, take your top three or take, have your top ten and yeah. then take your top three and, yeah. and you try them. And sometimes, you know, that it's not the right timing and you can feel, like, a lot of resistance. Yeah. Like, okay, let's put that one away for a little bit and move the next one up. Let's talk about that just for a minute about ranking ideas mm-hmm. or ranking to do's, ranking things must do today's. I use a, an app, okay. Microsoft to do, mm. and I have all kinds of great little to do lists <laughs> in it. And that's me. Oh, I need to have another list, right? <laughs> yep. Uh, because I don't, this idea doesn't have a home. So I'll, I'll start up a new folder. But what I do, Nicole, a lot, a lot is I write down my daily to do's, or at mm-hmm. least if something came close to me and I don't want to open the phone or I want to go to the app, I just write it down mm-hmm. or I'll put it on a sticky note or something. Mm-hmm. And then I have to collect Ooh. it all together. Mm-hmm. Right. And then when I do that, I like to rewrite them so that I could actually stage them differently on the page. Mm-hmm. Meaning here's the list that has, there are 20 things on the list and eight of them are crossed off. Mm-hmm. So which one on the list is next that should go on the top of my next list? So it's right. almost like I'm prioritizing. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. if my discipline is right, then I start working at the top of the list and then I go down. And then every day I look at it and I say, ah, you didn't do that good. <laughs> that was really important. Trace is going to kill you because you didn't do that. <laughs> and so that's a little bit of how I play with priorities, my ideas into actionable items. Do anything like that? Yeah, that's, I'm going to think about what you said later, but I do do that. So I have my lists, I have them in the computer, the important ones, Sure. but you know, every day I start actually, I changes all the time, but I have a uh, three by five index card now Uh in the morning I sit at my computer and I start writing them down. And then one of my coaches, I love this because they said, now you need to go through your list when you're getting overwhelmed and you need to come up with three things, stuff that just can totally fall off the list, yeah. you know? And then number two, what items can you give to somebody else? Go through and if there's anything on that list that somebody else can do for you, you need to make it happen today. Then you take the items that are left and you decide, my husband always says, I tell you every day, you know, pick the top two things. And that's really hard for someone like me and probably you to do. I mean, there's like a top 10. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> but um, that at least that advice has really helped me lately. So when I rewrite the mm-hmm. same task, like maybe it's the fifth or sixth time, uh-huh. I ask myself the question, how important is this really since I haven't been able to get to it? Yeah. And does it need to go on another list? <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, or does it need to go into the computer so that I bump into it when I'm looking? Yeah, that's so, important. Well, okay. Well, so we gave a great lesson here on to do's or priorities. And giving, <laughs> last call. Any final words for uh, that you're taking away from Transformers here? Ah, I mean, there's always stuff, but I just think again, it just uh, drives home the point being here that you know it is important to have a group. You have a group. You can bounce ideas off of, get new ideas, and. That's what has fueled me. And I feel like it will always as having a a group of people to kind of help you 
in your direction. Help me in my direction. Oh, perfect. Uh, you gave all the right reasons to be in a mastermind coaching mm -hmm. your 20 group. Thank you so much. Nicole Benikoff, honored to have you here. Subi Guys, Traverse City, Michigan. Good to meet you and to have you on the show. Thank you. It's It's awesome. I've listened for a few years. I've listened. I told Tracy that I have them all saved, like on my Facebook. Like every time there's a new one, I'm like, oh no, there's more, there's more, there's more. And I just keep saving, saving all of my. Uh... I knew she would say that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Cause I'm like, ooh, ooh, these little gems. So we can never say there's not information. Listen to learn just one thing. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for being on board to listen and learn from the premier automotive aftermarket podcast. Until next time.